Hi guys, uh, to understand the braking and the traction behavior, we need the deep knowledge on what happened in the contact patch of a tire uh, touching the road surface. I will explain uh, that issue on both static and dynamic behavior on the uh, next four parts. Let's start with the uh, first part of static tire behavior. The contents will be quiz and the review of effective radius per both of radial and bias tire and the stress uh, definition and the uh, conclusion. As usual, I prepare the quiz for you. Uh, there exist the shear stresses on the tire even when the vehicle stops on the level load. Uh, what is the right description about these stresses? Two following statements are right. Please select two. Number one, tire tends to compact the road surface longitudinally. Number two, tire tends to compact the road surface laterally. Number three, tire tends to stretch the road surface longitudinally. Number four, tire tends to stretch the road surface laterally. This is a review of effective radius for both of radial and bias tire. A radial tire has high stiffness belts circumferentially so that it is difficult to stretch itself uh, even though impression pressure or centripetal force gets bigger. As you can see, there are many strong belts noted as red, green, and yellow, and can be many more. On the other hand, bias tire has no high stiffness belts circumferentially, so that it is not so difficult to stretch itself uh, when impression pressure or centripetal force uh, gets bigger. As you can see, without strong belts, a rolling radius can be easily extended compared with a radial tire due to centripetal force. In this way, radially, like this manner. To understand the tire behavior, we have to learn the basic concept of uh, stress, uh, which is the engineering terminology. Uh, let's begin with the stress on the tiny element of tire. To understand the tire road surface contact patch, if we take the arbitrary tiny small element in the contact patch, described as a yellow color in the picture, uh, we have uh, three normal stresses here, here, and here. And the three shear stresses here, here, and here and the right side of the picture above here. Uh, stress have the unit of pressure, uh, which is the force divided by area, uh, which is equal to Newton per meter square. As explained in the previous slide, stress has the unit of pressure, which is kilogram per meter square. Uh, stresses are described as uh, three uh, letters as shown here. Uh, first the big one uh, written by red color is per type of stress uh, which is either sigma for normal stresses or tau for shear stresses. Uh, first the subscript indicates perpendicular direction to the plane here, on which the stress is acting. It has a plus sign if that direction is pointing to plus direction here of the corresponding coordinate axis. On the other hand, it has minus sign if the direction is pointing to the opposite side, this side. The second subscript denotes the direction of stress as describing in the picture here in this direction. It has plus sign 
if that direction is pointing to plus direction of corresponding coordinate axis and this axis here yeah. on the other hand it has minus sign if the direction is pointing to the opposite side normal stresses on the tiny element are either extension or compression a normal stress sign convention is very simple all the stresses have a plus sign per extension minus sign per compression as shown here uh, shear stress is a little bit confusing as being described in the previous slide if the signs of a first subscript and that of a second subscript are equal to each other uh, then result sign is plus otherwise it is minus uh, this is exactly the same as sign convention for multiplication as shown in the table here all the stresses in the picture have a plus sign here on the other hand all the stresses opposite to direction opposite direction in the picture have a minus sign Let's think about the vehicle uh, parked on the level road. The tire, tires of that vehicle is loaded in the vertical direction. In that case, there are three components of stresses. Uh, one normal component and two shear components. A Z direction force here is a normal component which is vertical uh, to the road surface. X and Y direction forces are parallel to the road surface, which are shear components. A longitudinal shear force here and lateral shear force here. Uh, even if the vehicle stops and the resultant forces are zero in X and Y direction, a tire shear stress components exist between tire and the road surface let's think about the normal stress in the tire contact patch uh, picture a here is the three dimensional description of the static normal stress over the tire contact patch the b uh, is the side view in the direction of x axis we are here and looking at stress distribution in this direction. Picture C here uh, is the side view in the direction of y axis. We are here and looking at uh, the stress distribution in this direction here. Uh, this picture originate, originated in the uh, book. Uh, the automotive chassis uh, written by uh, Giancarlo Genta and Lorenzo uh, Morello. Uh, to find more information, uh, you can refer to this book. I'm going to tell you the simple action to feel the shear stress. Uh, put your hands on the table and gently press it uh, with your palm. Uh, feel the horizontal force on your two palms. Uh, with the forcing your left hand to the right by rubbing the surface of the table and simultaneously uh, pushing your right hand to the left. Uh, that behavior is the same as compacting the table surface in this way. Now you are feeling the negative shear stress on your right palm here and the positive shear stress on your left palm. In this slide, uh, let's think about the uh, sign convention of shear stress. Uh, this picture describes the typical deformation shapes deformed by plus and minus tangential shear stress uh, respectively. Uh, in the previous slide, your hands experience exactly the same stresses described in this picture. In other words, your hands are the same as parallelograms. This one. 
What kinds of shear stresses are in the tire contact patch? Two kinds of shear stresses are acting on the contact patch. Uh, firstly, we have the longitudinal shear stress along the x-axis. Uh, by this stress, tire tends to compact the road surface longitudinally. In the previous slide, your hands experienced the same stress described in the picture A. Secondly, we have the lateral shear stress along the y-axis. By this stress, a tire tends to stretch the road surface laterally. In the previous slide, your hands experienced the opposite stress described in the picture B. The answer to the quiz is number one, tire tends to compact the road surface longitudinally. And number four, tire tends to stretch the road surface laterally. Here we have a conclusion in this video. Uh, stress distributions in the con uh, contact patch are not constant and influenced by tire structure inflation pressure, load, etc. Tire normal stress at the center of contact patch is close, close to the tire inflation pressure. Normal stress at the both sides are bigger than that at the center. In the static condition, which is not ro rolling, tire compacts the road surface longitudinally and tire stretches the road surface laterally. Previous video will help you enhance your specialty in vehicle knowledge. I explained how to obtain the uh, maximum acceleration value using the CG location data. Also, I explained the process to calculate the minimum time uh, for uh, 0 to 100 km per hour for all the drive types, all drive, front wheel drive, and rear wheel drive. Recently, I explained the structural characteristics of radial and bias tire and their dynamic radius variation over the speed range uh, due to the centripetal force. The next video will explain the stiffness curves on each degree of freedom depending on both of bias and radial tire. Uh, see you at the next video. Goodbye guys.